What do we need to do in order to be a successful program? You come together as a unit, you make decisions as a unit, as a program, and you stick to them, and you back each other up. And I, I think teams that are you know, tight-knit like that you know, are going to want to race hard for each other and are going to be successful in the long run. Accountability is big. This is the first step to do great things this year. The work we're putting in right now is going to feed us for later on and it's going to pay off later on. Bear down, be gritty, and compete. K-U-K-U-K-U-K-U! -K -U -K -U -K -U -K -U One, two, three! K-U! Go, go, go! I didn't want them to come into the season and just be an average team or shoot to be average in our conference or region. I thought we had a shot. I really, really did. I thought we had an outside shot. I thought we had an 80%, 90% shot. We set out to go to nationals. That was the goal. You know, we didn't set out to place top five at regionals or top six or seven or eight. I love that they have that goal. I love that they challenge themselves a little bit. Um, I think it was something that we needed for the program and you know, I think it speaks volumes to uh, the younger guys that, hey, you know, we're not going to sit here and just, you know, want to be a mid-pack team. We want to be somewhere towards the top. Came out of spring season uh, on a very big high note. We had a lot of good individual performances from 800 meters all the way up to 10K and we sort of went into summer training with this thought and this idea that with how the cross country season was looking and how we had performed throughout the previous year that finishing top four in the region and possibly going to nationals was a very good likelihood if we all put in the work. We came into this, this season with uh, some high expectations, high hopes. Um, you know, I think we got together uh, during our preseason camp and uh, you know, our goal overall was to try to make the national championships. This is a meeting that we have every year for the newcomers, just to kind of go over our goals and maybe talk about a few things here and there about the program. The first thing that I need to know is that you guys sat down as a group, came up with goals, and you know, what do we want to do? What, what's our goals for the season? Uh, mostly a goal, and okay. it's top four regionals. We want to try and get to nationals. I think this is, we think, this is the group that can do it. Okay. So. I believe the preseason polls put us at six yep. behind uh, Slippy Rock and, wow, who's Edinburgh. High, and Edinburgh, who, I mean, we know Rock is down and Edinburgh hasn't been as good as they have been in the past years and IEP's hurting, so right. I think that there's a very, very high, good chance that we can get that top four spot. That's not just like a stretch, I think that's a reality. Okay, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think the thing that we have on our side right now is I think we have a lot of depth. I think we have good leadership up front, with some of the uh, juniors and seniors here, and we have some good depth. And, um, you know, we have a freshman class that I think, you know, we don't like to put a lot of pressure on the freshmen here, but that, you know, can contribute in uh, one way or the other here, whether it be leadership or, you know, working hard or, uh, you know, contributing during the races and stuff like that. Let me ask you this, who knows the last time that a men's cross country team from Kutztown made the national championships? Let me see if you guys are doing your homework. 04? Anybody else? It was 1988. That's the, that's the one and only time they have ever made it. Over the years, we had really struggled in the distance events, and I think that just helped everyone in general. And I mean, everyone sort of just went to the summer very motivated, very excited, and, you know, separate groups met up on separate occasions doing runs. You know, I know Steve, myself, CJ met up more than, you know, a handful of times to do Sunday long runs together and just, you know, have someone to run with there. And I think that was a big component for us too, is that we were able to hold each other accountable over the summer, which was something that is a little more difficult with everyone being spread out. But because of that, we, you know, got better from that. And we came into camp looking like, you know, one of the best teams that Coach Hoffman had. I thought with the personnel that we had and, uh, you know, the talent, um, you know, we had a shot of making it. Now there, there's good six, seven teams in in our region that probably all will go for those, you know, four spots. And you know, it wasn't going to come easy. 
but we thought we definitely had the talent to do it. You know, I think in general, we, we as a team did a phenomenal job just coming in in fantastic shape in probably some of the best shapes of our lives and just, you know, we really put in the work this summer and everyone showed up to our first workout and preseason and proved it. The field hockey tempo, that was the best opening day workout we had since I've been here. That's, you know, no doubt. Um, and the young kids came in with like a, a desire to, to really contribute early on. Uh, they, they were, you know, they weren't average freshmen. They, they were, you know, embracing their role and really wanted to push and they, they worked really hard and they were really important to what we did here and what we really wanted to do moving forward. We went up to Stonehill University, which was a bit different. Our usual first meet is more of a, a close to home rust buster. We sort of just get the junk out of our legs. You know, you're not looking to run super well that first race and do incredible things. We opened up the season um, really strong um, up at uh, Stonehill, um, saw some real positive stuff. Uh, still had work to do, but you know we were in a, a base phase and it's getting stronger. Um, you know I thought we had a couple of newcomers that showed some promise. Uh, you know Nick Tichonero and Nate Burkhardt and uh, AJ Kilpatrick. Stonehill was our uh, first was our first meet, and that was my first collegiate race. And going into that um, that race, it was I was feeling uh, kind of nervous. You know, going to, from a 5K to an 8K. Um, I felt like the race went really well. I just stayed consistent with my uh, with myself. I think I hit like straight 530s and just hit like a hit like a pretty good time. I think it was around 27, uh, 48, something like that. But overall, I felt like the first race, even though it was a little nerve wracking, I think it, uh, it definitely went uh, definitely went well. We just went up with a goal of you know pretty much structuring that race around how we were going to try to run every race in that season and. The simple goal was, you know, let Steve do his thing, you know, let Steve just grind out up front, get that low stick for us, and then really we just wanted to get a core group of four to seven guys who could all run together for the entire race and really just stick together, grind through the hard part, and in the final, you know, 3,000 meters, really just, you know, start to stretch out a little bit and start to go on their own accord. Stonehill was actually like a really good indicator because I honestly feel like that was like the first time and I've had great teammates prior to this year, don't get me wrong, but like that was like the first time where we ran in a pack of like th four or more for the entire race. Like usually like we pack up early and like disperse and everybody gets all screwed up. But like that was the first race that I ran here where we had like an actual pack and like there were like guys within like five seconds of each other, like nothing like spread out or anything. Like and that was really cool and like really refreshing to see that we could do that. As a team we ran very well. I believe we finished fourth there, maybe fifth, but you know, the structure was there for the whole rest of the season where we knew, hey, we have at least f four guys who can stick together on any given day in a pack and we can probably get more together and seeing that at the first meet early on in the season, you know, with not many workouts together, it was just, you know, a big boost. So, you know, after the Stonehill meet, um, you know, went back to work. From Stonehill to the home meet, we did um, one or two workouts on the course to really work it in, get get ourselves prepared, get ourselves recognized with the course, you know, remember it, you know, it's not a course that we run often, so, and we were going to be running it twice this year, so, you know, it helped to do as many workouts on it as possible. Coming back here for the home meet, that's always fun. Uh, this year didn't suck too bad, we didn't, uh, usually that meet's just not fun, it's usually like humid and just like hilly and hot and it's just like our course is hard and it's just not fun at all but that was it was it was a pretty good day uh compared to years past we had a really good showing there and we that the best part about that was that we had a good showing and we didn't have our best day you know we competed really well against some really good teams and we were kind of shocked with our result because we didn't do so well in our in our opinion it showed in the results i mean we had another good performance we saw some other conference schools and how they were running and you know we knew where we stood and we knew what we had to improve on to uh, to get where we wanted to be at the end of the season. I thought, you know, Steve Main looked real good up front for us and, you know, that, as expected. Um, you know, I thought Mike uh, ran really well for us, CJ and Brian, some of the older guys um, looked real good. 
Um, you know, one of our fifth year guys, Andrew Thompson, was definitely coming back. Um, more of a middle distance runner, but a guy that, that can definitely contribute. But he, he had some work to do and uh, saw a lot of life out of A.J. Kilpatrick that day. The wheels started to come off the wagon a little bit, I guess, because between there and Paul Short, we somehow lost like half our team and ran with like two guys at Paul Short. Um, unfortunately, all things don't always go in the right direction. And uh, within 24 hours after our home meet, which is in mid-September, um, we had three of our top seven guys, um, you know, complaining about some nagging injuries. Um, Xavier uh, being one of them with some hip problems, AJ Kilpatrick uh, with some plantar fasciitis, and uh, Mike uh, with some uh, some knee problems. So, uh, you know, three of our top seven now are on the shelf and we're trying to nurse them back. Um, you know, Mike came back fairly quick uh, compared to the other two and, you know, was able to get some good work in, miss some important stuff. After D2 Challenge, um, I tweaked my knee, I like stepped in a hole or something, and it didn't hit me until the day after the race. And after the race, uh, uh, well, yeah, the day after the race, and I tried running, doing our like Sunday long run, and I made it like two minutes into the run. I was like, whoa, like something's wrong. So uh, I went back, I iced, and then that whole week, I just didn't run. I went in the pool, because um, I talked to Jack, and he said he doesn't know what's like wrong with it, but um, he's just gonna try and take care of me until you know, the season, like, I, that was, like, close to the mid, like, season mark, so, like, he was, like, yeah, I'm gonna take, like, you're gonna have to keep, like, taking care of it, but, like, it wasn't like we had, like, two weeks to go, like, we had a good, like, month and a half of, just, like, training we still to do, so, um, that was definitely a big setback. From then up until, uh, regionals, I had to get my knee taped every single day. Unfortunately, AJ and, uh, and Xavier, um, weren't recovering fast enough, and, uh, didn't look like they were really going to have much of a season left. So there was two voids right there. And then right around that time, uh, Steve Main was uh, our number one guy was uh, complaining about some uh, arch problems. So we had to sit him out. He missed about a good two, two and a half weeks of solid training. Missed our next meet over at Paul Short, which is a meet we really gear up for. It's the one meet during regular season. I'll, you know, let them have their legs back and, uh, and, and be a little bit fresher. So, uh, you know, at that point, you know, we were just hoping for guys like C.J. Bauer, Brian Taylor to kind of take the reins and, uh, you know, lead the young group and, uh, you know, just put some good work in so when we get everybody back, you know, we can, we can go after some stuff. We really pulled together. That was, that was like a really tough time for us. You know, we could have folded right there. We could have called it over early October and we didn't. And that was really, really cool to see because I was really worried that guys would just, you know, at that point become unfocused and just give up and just say, you know, on the track. And it was, it was good to see that, you know, instead of that, we were able to run with a, we didn't even field enough guys for Paul Short. Like we had, I think, what, we run like six or something like that, it was seven, like exactly. Like it, was, it was a small group, but like we, um, everybody showed up that day. Like it was, it was, it was a good effort, and that was really huge moving forward. Paul Short was a very big race for us. That was sort of, that was sort of the first, you know, real big, you know, this is, this is it, you know, this is the real deal. We, we can do this, you know, if we keep just moving forward, if we just keep training hard, if we keep working hard, and you know, everyone has a stellar day, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do great things. Matt Cooper was used as like a workout, essentially because we were just gearing up for the big championship meets. And, you know, as minuscule as that may seem, it was really cool because in my whole time here, like we had never flat out said we're using a meet as a workout because we never ever had like legitimate postseason aspirations. Like it was just like, okay, like PSAX and regionals are meets that we'll run in, but like we're not necessarily trying to make any sort of noise. We're just gonna go there and give it our best shot and call it a season and this year that wasn't the case you know there was a clear um, objective that we wanted to hit and we worked in that you know um, that week leading up to Matt Cooper we really worked and then the week after we worked. We're going into the conference meet um, you know I thought we had a good attitude I think you know some guys were fighting some uh, mental issues with knowing that some of their teammates that they needed uh, to be healthy and ready to go weren't there but you know we gave it a go and you know, I thought the guys did a, did a pretty good, nice job at the conference meet. I mean, uh, 
you know, came back and, and finished uh, fifth at the conference meet and, um, you know, knocking on the, the door of the top four there for the regional. PSAX this year was a really, really cool experience because we had it on the home course and that's, you know, not always, you know, a thing. We were lucky enough to run on it uh, my freshman year and then, you know, I hadn't been here since and as a senior being able to go out on homecoming weekend on our home course, like that was just like a really, really cool experience. And we had a great showing. Um, Peace Axe was honestly like, that'll be one of those meets that I look back on with a lot of pride because that was something that, you know, it was our best finish in 15 years or 14 years, something like that. Yeah, 14 years, but it was our best finish since 2002. And when you think about that and you put that in perspective, that we have guys on this team who are two years old, three years old when that meet happened in 2002. And now we just, you know, that, this was the best team since then. And it's, it was really cool to see us do that well at that meet and again it was kind of like the same feeling from the home meet where we ran really really well but then felt like we could have done more like there was a slight feeling where like okay that was pretty good but like did we could have done better and we got fifth which was you know again like it might not seem like a big thing but when I was a freshman here we were getting like ninth and tenth at meets like that so you know in such a small time to improve that much and to actually make Legitimate noise on that stage is a really cool thing to see because in years past it would have just been another meet to go to and it would have just been all right there's peace access let's go run it and call it a day like we went in there with like a focus and a goal and we really went after it and um, we were a little ambitious and we we lost some spots at the end and that's always you know a heartbreaker that, that never feels good when people you know fly past you and then you realize that those people who flew past you were actually the difference between you know fourth and fifth or whatever it may be. So that wasn't, you know, a good part, but it was also something that lit the fire for us going forward and uh, kept us focused going into the regional meet, which was, you know, obviously very important. Peace Axe is an insanely important meet for us, but like at the same time, we were using it as like a simulation to kind of figure out where we would be in two weeks. You know, we wanted to gauge how well we could run against teams like Bloom and ESU. And even, you know, the big, I'm not saying that we were going to ever beat them, but like we wanted to see how we matched up against teams like Lockhaven and Ship, just because those are teams that we were never able to, like, we couldn't even think about competing with their worst guy. The week after Peace Axe was a really good training week. Uh, we, you know, everybody was healthy, you know, guys were confident, we were going fast, we were doing like really quick workouts, we were doing like twos and fours and like getting on our toes and sprinting and stuff, kind of like it was track season. And when you're, when you're getting through a, five, six month long training cycle where, you know, you spent 80% of it just doing base mileage. You're just running miles on miles and miles and doing like slow and long drawn out workouts. When coach says, you know, you can go run a four and a two in a workout, like a little bit of you gets like kind of excited and it's like fun to really run around and do that stuff. And we got the opportunity to do that the week after Peace Axe, just to kind of like get our legs ready to really go fast at Slippery Rock. Those last year he's going in the regionals, I was stressing out. like I wasn't really talking to people, I was on edge. A lot of people were like coming up, a lot of people were coming up to me trying to joke with me and stuff like that. I couldn't really take jokes at the time. I was just so nervous and wasn't really sure. Um, the biggest thing that I think as a team, like I didn't, as a team is going into the meet, I knew we had a shot. Now because of things that have happened with, um, with CJ, Mike D, the little injuries here and there, I kind of felt like something great in us was just trying to stop us and to kept throwing roadblocks in our way. That Monday it was when I stepped in the hole on the trail and completely blew out my right ankle and spent Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday in the training room getting all sorts of treatment. And, uh... You know, I'm out at the track uh, working with some of the track kids and, you know, it was a Monday and uh, guys are out on like a you know, recovery run and, uh, you know, CJ comes back real early shaking his head, you know, what's wrong? And I rolled my ankle and you're thinking, oh man, you know, we got six days until uh, the conference championship, rolled his ankle pretty bad and, you know, I think it's just human nature that, you know, you kind of feel a little bit deflated and, you know, but you, as a coach, you're keeping your spirits up and being positive and you want to push that on to your, your athletes. And, you know, once the guys all came back from the run, found out what happened, you could see they were a little bit deflated. Um, you know, the thing, I, I give a lot of credit to our trainers, did a great job with getting CJ healthy. 
um, you know, somewhat healthy. You know, fortunately, he was able to go out and run on Saturday. He wasn't 100%, and I give CJ a ton of credit. Um, at that point, a lot of people were thrown in the towel, and, you know, I'm done for that season. Let's move on. Um, you know, he went through a little bit of a roller coaster that week of, of being like, you know, I'll be back to where I don't think I can do it, to I'll be back. And, you know, 24 hours beforehand, he got the approval of the race. And, you know, I think he was pretty excited and ended up doing a nice job for us. I think he was our number four guy at the regional meet. Not 100%, but did some good stuff. But, um, you know, when, when your number two guy gets hurt, you know, it's hard for the rest of the team not to think uh, we're in a little bit of trouble here. Um, but I thought the guys did a good job trying to keep their heads on straight and being positive with each other and, you know, saying, hey, we're going to keep going after this goal. To go down five days out from that meet was, th that sucked. That was just like the worst feeling in the world. Like uh, it was, it was just, I don't want to say heartbreaking, but it was definitely defeating, you know, because you work so long and so hard for this one thing. and. You get, you know, you have a good year and you're healthy and you're feeling great and then boom, like you go down, you step in a friggin' hole and it's over, you know. And I, I, I was under the impression that it might be over, but um, I'm so thankful for the work of the training staff and the support of coach and the whole team in general. Like, I was pushed through that week. Like, it was, I spent three days icing. Uh, Thursday after one of the sessions, Jack taped me up and said, go run in the hallway, go jog down the hallway. And I was able to do it in the tape. And he was like, all right, not bad. Thursday I ran a mile. And then Friday I did pre-meet and Saturday I raced. Before the race, I, uh, we had a race plan going. We had the, our plan was to stick on a Bloomsburg and see what we could do from there. We knew that they were ranked in front of us. And uh, I knew what the race plan was. It just, uh, feeling before the race, it was, uh, it was a little, I was a little, ner a little nervous, definitely, uh, being a freshman and going from last year, I was preparing for states as, as a senior in high school, and then like a year later, you're going, uh, preparing for regionals at the NCAA Division II level. Uh, definitely a step up and uh, definitely nerve wracking for sure, but uh, I just went in there kind of with a clear head. Um, unfortunately at regionals, you know, you were going from five miles to 10K, and you know, I think when we got, you know, Mike back and, you know, a couple of the other guys, um, they just weren't prepared enough for, for 10K. So um, went at it, we dug in, did what we could, and unfortunately the ball just didn't bounce in our direction there. So, um, you know, I think we had some good highlights individually. Of course, you know, Steve qualifying for a second national championship was great. Um, super excited for him. Uh, but then on the flip end, you know, the flip side, um, you're a little bit down because, you know, you went into the season with some high expectations and somewhat realistic and um, we didn't accomplish them, you know. So to see guys like, you know, Andrew Thompson and, and CJ Bauer and, and Brian Taylor, it's their, their last season, um, you know, come a little bit short of their goals. Um, it's tough because they're great kids and, you know, they've done justice for this program over the last four to five years and you want to see them go out on a high note. The regional meet is definitely not the outcome we were hoping for and you know we have to be honest about that. The only people who were locks were literally Lock Haven Ship and Edinburgh. That fourth spot was wide open. Um, that We just could have made history that day. We uh, all season we were talking about you know going to nationals and uh, that was the place that was where we could do it. If there was things that would have went our way, I think we will all be going to Florida as a team right now. We had a plan. We had to go after uh, Bloomsburg, another top team in uh, the PSAC. And um, that was our plan. And honestly, through the, throughout like 5K, so it was a 10K, throughout 5K, we, I think we executed the plan pretty well. Um, every Bloom guy that was moving up, we were right next to them. And um, then somewhere along the line, we just really split up. I mean, Thompson did great. He, he sat right on those guys almost the entire race. Um, I eventually fought back, but somewhere somewhere in that race, we just broke apart and we just couldn't uh, repair it. But in the end, they didn't even end up going to nationals because a, a school from outside of our conference ended up getting that fourth bid that we were trying to get all season. As a team, were we disappointed with the result? Yes, but I feel like uh, that shouldn't overlook our season overall. I felt like we had a very successful season. With the three, with the three seniors graduating, C.J. Bryan and um, Thompson, is they left they left something behind that that I could take, especially C.J. C.J. really like, taught you how to like lead people, 
without um, without being mean about it, or being forceful about it. Kind of just was that natural God who you just want to follow. So I think with their class, seeing how hard we worked and seeing how, seeing how hard CJ worked and them, and with them leaving, left a stamp on us. Now it's up to Mike D, I, Danny, and the other upperclassmen to, to guide them back. I'm gonna miss these seniors, man. I had Thompson, uh, CJ, Brian, they were uh, huge, huge, uh, great leaders on this team. Uh, people that I could look up to. And one thing that I took from them is just really uh, just the hard work, uh, work ethic. Um, th those are three guys that go in every day that really work hard and I just looked up to that and I would really, I just like see them working hard, that means I gotta work hard in practice. See them racing hard, I gotta race hard. So that's really what I'm gonna take from them is th definitely their work ethic and how they go in day in and day out looking to work hard and uh, just with their goals and standards set high, uh, I got to keep my goals and standards set high too. Definitely. You know, our goal was to go to nationals. That was that was it. Like we usually come up with like three team goals, but this year, like I, if we can't, I couldn't even tell you if we came up with three. I know we came up with that one. That was uh, that was the goal. And to fall short of that was, you know, not 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 a good feeling. But at the same time, um, I don't think that takes away from what we did this season because. I think the biggest thing we did this season was set the tone for the future generation, you know, the super talented freshman class and generations who come after them. And, you know, even the older guys who will be back here next year, like me, Brian, and Thompson are done, but like we got guys like Mike D and Steve who step into, Steve's already in one, but Mike D will step into a leadership role. And, you know, those guys will be juniors like Jared and X and Jose showed crazy growth. And, you know, that's, that, that was, definitely like an underlying objective this year. Like we wanted to go to nationals, but we also talked a lot about quote unquote changing the culture of this program. And I think we definitely did that. I think we, you know, made a transition from a team that was, you know, always kind of good and had potential. But I think, you know, those teams kind of fell short of how good they could have been. And I think this year we really made that jump from being one of those teams to being a team that's actually going to realize the potential within themselves and go out there and really, really train hard and get behind a once in a generation runner like Steve and be able to back that guy up and to run, you know, as a tight, fast group behind him and give us a chance to really go do something crazy. And as alumni, I, I, it makes me glad to see all the guys put in hard work and sort of change the culture of the team. Because when I got here, our team was sort of split between guys that really wanted to do well and guys who were just on the team to be on the team. And to see us to slowly get pieces throughout the years with a couple of freshmen and transfers and, and guys coming back that took time off. Um, some of the guys are tired of being average and to see us come together and, and guys putting work at practice and, and guys take care of themselves during the weekends, uh, especially after meets. Um, the team wanted to be better. I'm gonna relate this to Miami Heat. They got LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Ray Allen. Did they win their first year when they were playing together? No, they had to get the chemistry and stuff together. So just because it didn't work out now doesn't mean it's not going to work out in the future. I think there's nothing you could take away from this to make it failure. Nobody should have their head down. Um, we're going to get right back to work soon and during track season's over. We're going to get those goals accomplished. We're going to do what we have to do in those seasons. And then we're going to get back to summer training. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to come in more focused, more hungry. We don't really let people know who we are. You know, next year, even though we're losing, you know, me, Brian, and Thompson, I think that if they bring in a good class next year, I think Steve and Mighty can lead the, that group, you know, who's, who's out there. I think they can really guide those guys to see our goal happen. You know, I, th I think, I, I don't think it's out of the picture. And, you know, I, I, I will view them going to nationals next year if they get there. That, that'll be something that, you know, I'll, be able to look at it and be like, you know what, like, I might not be going, but I played a part in that, and that's that's cool to see, you know. And that and that, that's that if if anything, we left a legacy here, you know. And I think that's really important, and I can't go un, unnoted, you know. I think I think this program will be different for a long time because of this team, and that's something that you cherish, you know. It's not it's not a national championship trophy, it's not a regional championship trophy, it's not even a regional qualification, but it's something that we can really, you know, put our names on and say we were the team that really flipped this around and that's really cool.